Welcome to this week's edition of Confessions of a Fitness Professional. I apologize for the sound. I am sitting on my porch because I decided it is too nice a day to be stuck inside in my studio or in my home office. I wanted to get outside. So you might hear outdoor sounds, you might hear a car go by, but you know what? We only have one life. So might as well be outside with poor audio quality versus inside with like, okay, audio quality. Still working on the audio quality for my podcast. I figured it out for my fitness business and for streaming classes and for recording classes, but for the life of me, it's just something I'm working on for the podcast. So thank you for bearing with me. You might want to turn this up or maybe it's best listened to with little AirPods or earbuds in each week. With all of that aside, hi, welcome. I want to talk about egos. Yeah, she's here. We're going to talk about her. We're going to talk about the ego in the room. It's something that I did not anticipate going into the fitness profession that I would encounter. And I'm not sure why. I. It's funny, I work with high school students in my other, my other full-time job and we're always talking about how things will get better once you go to the next step. Like, oh, once we're out of high school, all of this drama will go away. And I, I don't have the heart to tell them that the drama follows the dramatic people wherever they go. Yes, people get a little bit better with age. People find wisdom and maturity, but for the most part, drama follows the dramatic, right? We can say that. With that, I know having been a female going to high school that I was often the target of being bullied. I was an unfortunate student. <laughs> I was a great student. I was kind of a teacher's pet, which got, got a little bit bullied for, but I also gained a lot of weight in high school. I wasn't sure how to manage my nutrition and I, I just hormones and everything. I gained a lot of weight in high school and I was teased a lot in different ways for that. So I don't know why I thought going into the fitness profession that I would be free of bullying or free of the ego, but oh boy. <laughs> and I think I'm noticing, and I wanted to talk about it now because I think I'm noticing it coming back really strong after COVID. I saw during COVID, after the initial where studio owners and and fitness instructors were like, what do I do? How do I keep my business going? How do I keep working? How do I keep helping people? Once we got through that piece, I saw a great thing happen in the fitness community. People came together. The community was stronger than ever. Fitness instructors had each other's backs. I, I was referring people left and right. People were referring people left and right to me. But now that things have sort of settled a little bit post-pandemic, which I thought about this last week. Can I say post-pandemic? Is that official? Are we officially post-pandemic at this point? Maybe we'll just say that. We'll just say it. Post pandemic, I'm seeing the ego coming back full force. And here's what I mean by that. I walk into a gym. I'm not new to the profession, but I'm new to that particular facility. I am greeted by nice faces. Hello, hello. And then immediately after my class, I am confronted by another fitness instructor who says, that's the time slot that I like to teach. Thank you for holding on to it while I wasn't here for a little while. And I'm like, okay, step back, step back, step back. What? <laughs> I don't know who you are. And okay, like you can have whatever time slot you want. And I was just thinking to myself, are we still here? I'm 15 years into the fitness profession and we are still here. Shame, shame, shame. We still have instructors who are so tight with the idea of teaching a particular time slot. They have to teach at a certain facility on a certain day at a certain time because they've been there forever and it is their right to do so. Now listen, when I was a green fitness instructor and knew nothing, I accepted the ego, I accepted the bullying, I accepted it as almost like a hazing of 
figuring out where I fit into the fold as a fitness instructor. I might have mentioned it on here, or maybe I wrote about it on the blog, how when I very first started teaching fitness, they wouldn't give me, the place that I wanted to teach would not give me a class. They would not give me a time slot. They wanted to keep the people that looked more like a fitness instructor in those spots. And they created an early morning, 7, 15 a.m. class for me where they were like, well, we'll see how this goes. Well, I blew it out of the park. People came and we had so much fun and we created this really great community and it was amazing until I was done with it and handed it off to somebody else and said, now it's your turn. <laughs> you go forth and make it amazing, which they continue to do until it, until maybe just before COVID actually. Anyway, I accepted that form of bullying and those egos of those fitness instructors at the time because I was brand new and I just desperately wanted to teach and did not care when it was, what day it was. I just wanted to be in there. Now over time, they made me feel like, oh, if you look the part and you're really good, you can get the coveted 5 p.m. time slot. So I was sort of chasing this idea of the perfect day and the perfect time slot for years as a fitness instructor. And finally, I got those time slots. And you know what? It didn't make a, a hoot of difference. It did not make a difference. The class would rise or fall depending on what effort I put into it and how good I marketed it and promoted it and, and enabled and encouraged my clients to promote it and push it. So all of that time I was chasing something that wasn't even real. So let me put this out there. Why do we have instructors with such egos and instructors who think it is okay to bully other instructors? I don't, I don't get it. We're not, one isn't necessarily better than another. How about this? When I started, when I didn't get the coveted time slot that I really wanted at the facility where I wanted to teach, I thought maybe I need more experience. So I went to every gym in like a 25 mile radius and walked in with my little resume and a dream and a hope and a question of, I would really like to teach here don't care what you pay me, I just want the experience. Would you hire me? And like nine out of 10 of them did. So I got to teach at facilities all over the place and I really built my own identity as a fitness instructor, my own brand as a fitness instructor, and I learned a lot about the fitness class environment, about clients, about gym management, all of those things. So I'm grateful for that little episode of almost being bullied and hazed because it made me into the better instructor that I am today as a result. But one of those facilities, I had a personal trainer frequently come to my classes just to check it out. Well, at the end of classes, I started hearing and learning that they were trying to poach people into a class that would happen at the same time that they wanted to teach. So they were coming to my class to try to, quote, poach people from my class to build a class of their own. Why are we doing this? <laughs> it didn't work. It ended up not working. But that energy that somebody took and put themselves in a situation and, and the people in my class kind of looked at me like what is happening right now like I come here for this class like this is what I'm here for this is what I want to come to I, I'm not here to take some other class and I think at first I was offended I was like this is not your class you have no right to be here I mean they had a right to everybody has a right to be there but they had no right to be there in the capacity that they were there they weren't there to just enjoy the class, get a workout, have fun, build community. They were there to try to create their own class and build their own community from the people in the class that I had built and created. Ooh, I sound like I have an ego coming from that. But when you think about the overall, what they were trying to do, it was not right. It was, it was a little sketchy. It was a little sketchy. Now I will say over the years, I've had lots of fitness instructors come and take my class, just take it. And you know what, if they took things from what I did or they borrowed what I taught or my mannerisms, cool, I hope it worked for them. That's not a problem. I think 
when I first started teaching, I probably thought that was a problem. Like you can imitate me, but you will <laughs> never be me. <laughs> you can try to do the things that I do, but they look silly on you. And that's sort of the mentality and the attitude that I had toward other instructors for the longest time. And I think some of it was because I was burned so badly when I very first wanted to be an instructor. And as a result, that has really stopped me from joining a real fitness instructor community. I have a hard time sort of fitting in with the other instructors. I'm not just like a, we'll see how it goes kind of person. I'm like, oh, we'll make it how it goes. We're going to make it into something. We're going to come in, make it better, make it stronger, make it, make it really great. And then when I get burned out, I'll walk away from it and it'll be fine. <laughs> That's sort of my MO as a fitness instructor. But I've just encountered so many personalities and so many egos. And at the end of the day, we're all not making a lot of money. We're all helping other people. So why does the ego still exist? Why does it still exist? And why am I finding that post pandemic, we're getting back to where we were? We spent three years building each other up, referring people to each other, really going above and beyond to serve our clients and serve the fitness, the greater fitness community by teaching online, teaching via FaceTime, teaching in parks, going everywhere above and beyond what we really needed to provide. Why are we back here? And maybe I'm just seeing it because I'm starting to rejoin gyms as a fitness instructor and trying to figure out like the flow of the place, how do people interact with each other. I do see instructors sort of picking up the slack for each other and offering to take classes or sub in as needed. I haven't yet needed that for classes because I'm sort of just filling in gaps at this time. I don't really, I haven't really created a class that's my own to, to push forward. So maybe I'll reevaluate when I get there, if I get there. But right now I'm sort of enjoying just filling in, filling in the gaps. So I guess I want to know if you are a fitness instructor, how are you seeing this? Are you seeing egos? How do you feel about the fitness instructor community? Do you think it's stronger than ever? Do you think there are cracks in it? Are you being treated fairly as a fitness instructor? Are you welcomed? I, I've never had a facility that I have worked at as a fitness instructor where I felt 100% welcome. There was always something where I feel like I wasn't told all the information. I was not on the priority list in terms of getting classes, being asked to sub, that sort of thing. I was appreciated because I brought in a lot of clients at different places, but I never have felt that very strong sense of camaraderie or community. So that's my, that's my next thing as a fitness instructor. I, I went, I've gone to conferences to find those communities and I have built better relationships with people who are like 2000 miles away than I have with the instructors in my own backyard. I have a couple of good instructor relationships in my backyard, but not from places that I've worked, which is kind of wild to think about. I have joined the Fit Biz Club membership. It's like a monthly membership. And I went to a conference in Arizona uh, two summers ago, and that was awesome just to talk with other fitness professionals. Cause listen, we need that. We need that. Think about if you're not a fitness professional, think about your job. Don't you need somebody to talk to, to celebrate, to commiserate, to just say, hey, what the heck is this? <laughs> Ask questions of without feeling like completely incompetent. You need that community in any profession. So why is it that the fitness instructor community is so riddled with egos and so riddled with kind of false friendships and people are willing to to jump and step all over each other to get the most coveted time slots and the most coveted classes and 
to be able to teach at the most coveted studios. I will say there is one gym in this area that had that would not hire me because I did not look a certain way. And I know I need to be careful. If you are a local person and you know where I live, you will figure out what it is right away because I feel like I've heard that from lots of other people too. That's the way it is. They have a certain identity, a certain brand, and if you don't fit it, you don't fit it. But whatever, I guess fitness really isn't meant to be inclusive of everybody at certain places. We'll throw that one out there. I want to know what you think. If you're a fitness professional, do you find that other instructors treat you well? Do you treat other instructors well? Do you encounter egos? You know, we're all just trying to make people better. People create healthier, better lifestyles. So I don't understand why we pick on each other and why we tear each other down. And it doesn't have to be buddy, buddy, best friend, but we should at least be looking out for each other because it's not, it's a profession that isn't quite as respected as it should be. Like we are in charge of making people better versions of themselves. And that is amazing, but it is not, it's not a career that many people can live off of. And that's that we need to look at that. We need to look at that. That's kind of sad. Preventative does not make as much money as prescription, medicine, you know, treating the symptoms. Preventative health just isn't there. And it'd be great to see it go even farther. And maybe that would deal with some of the egos that we can enc we encounter in fitness professionals. Well, I appreciate you listening to all of that. It's been hot on my mind because I had a conversation in the last week or so with another instructor about it. And it's something that I think about frequently. And even, I don't care anymore, but when I was first doing fitness events, I would just reach out to all kinds of local businesses to try to host a class at their location. And apparently I reached out to someone where they already had an instructor, but they were only teaching one day a week. So I was gonna teach one day a week and that instructor was not having it. They were not happy. They said, go find your own place to teach. This is my territory. And I was like, whoa, there are seven days in a week. So unless you're here all seven days, I don't understand. So things like that, that's what I'm talking about. Things like that, that happen. And I think about it all the time because I'm constantly trying to find new places to teach. I, I like to branch out. I like to offer different kinds of classes and events. I, I'm not a big fan of the same routine for 10 years. I, I've tried that. It doesn't work for me. So I like to switch it up a little bit, but thank you for, for, listening through all of that, I would love to know if you have experienced similar things or if you're seeing similar things and let's focus on the health and wellness of our clients and not our egos. Bye.